I first came up here uh, in February 1970 with two schoolmates at the, the last year in school. Uh, we travelled by train up to Dent Station um, and walked back from Dent Station through Dentdale and over Gleemore in the snow to Ribble Head, which is approximately a nine mile walk. And I was hooked. I caught a thing that at the, at the time there was a phrase going around, a, an incurable disease called cetocarlitis. Well, I've got it. Uh, 50 some years on, which it doesn't seem like 50 some years on, um, I now live in Seto and I've lived here for the past 15 years. Three stations have served this historic market town. Settle Junction, that was the first, that closed early. 1877, when this grey two listed station, originally called Settle New, designed by the Midland Railway Company architect John Hollowell Saunders, was opened at the same time as the line, off to Carlisle on May the 1st, 1876. Its title, Settle New, was renamed Settle on the 1st of July, 1879, by when its sister station, Settle Old, became Giggleswick. The station today is part-time staffed, with a waiting room and other station facilities, a popular spot for enthusiasts like Howard. Uh, I'm a volunteer for Fosco, Friends of the Settle Carlisle Line, and I work in a shop at Settle here behind us. Um, we serve hot and cold drinks. Hot drinks are very necessary in some of the weather in Settle. Um, and chocolate and snacks and crisps, etc. Also a range of um, railway DVDs and um, railway books and then the most important thing of a lot Thomas the Tank Engine memorabilia. Um, pretty much anything to do with railways over Seto Carlisle Railway in particular. Um, we also provide information for the sometimes confused customers um, who don't quite understand where they are. I mean we had one once who suggested that they were in Lancashire um, which didn't go down very well in Yorkshire and I'm a Lancastrian so I should know. Unlike the visitors, one feature at the station, the walkover bridge, is not native to settle. This was originally at Drem Station in East Lothian until electrification of the East Coast Main Line made it redundant. Being re-erected here in 1993, it's a safer way to cross the tracks than the original Barrow Crossing. The old station signal box was closed in 1984 and has been restored as a visitor attraction by the Friends of Settle and Carlisle Railway Line, with a water tower in the former goods yard now converted into residential accommodation since 2011. The town of Settle has origins dating back to the 13th century in the shadow of the Yorkshire Pennines, known as the Gateway to the three peaks, Penny Ghent, Wernside and Ingleborough. Well, I was, on, I was on the last passenger train over here, when we withdrew them in 1970. I was on the first Dales Rail, and I was on the first passenger train, the stoppers, back in 1986 when we reintroduced them. So, yeah, I know. So this railway cut through the stunning limestone landscape and waterfalls with a hidden kiln connected to the railway that it sits beside. Known as the Craven Lime Works, this lime kiln was in use from 1858 by its German inventor, Friedrich Hoffmann. Limestone was brought in from a nearby quarry and burned with the coal.
absolutely amazing. An old lime kiln, the Hoffman kilns, not far from Settle Station. This is uh, truly an amazing sight to see. Now a local person who's been coming in for many years, Marilyn, will explain a little bit better than me. It's really an incredible uh, place to visit. And the whole area here underneath Langcliffe Scar are many uh, kilns uh, that were used uh, in the production of lime. And as one new uh, process became uh, invented, or they found a better way of manufacturing, that kiln would cease to be used and they built a different uh, kiln. Onto, and at one point they built the Hoffman kiln at the end of the uh, 19th century. And uh, you can go in the kiln, you can walk all the way around, you can see even stalactites and stalagmites now as time's gone on. And also, if you go to the rear of the kiln, you can see the old uh, tramway or train track where horse-drawn uh, carriages with the uh, limestone were brought down to the kiln uh, after the uh, manufacturer the limestone, the lime, they would take it just to the railway line, which was down there, and then it was took away to where it would be. Um, if you were to uh, go further. Uh, past the kiln, you can climb up a little bit to get a really good view uh, on top and that will lead you to what's known as the triple kilns which were used and they're quite impressive although they fenced off you can still see the three tops to them, the circular uh, formation of them and then steps lead down right to the railway line where you've got the entrance to these three quite big uh, triple kilns the very high structures. Entrance to them now uh, is difficult to get in, but you can certainly go and see them. And then from there, of course, and it is spectacular, probably the largest one in the UK, but it would be nice if they went to see the other ones as well. And the main thing is I'm so glad that it's been preserved and it's not been made into a big attraction that uh, would spoil you know, the natural uh, beauty of the area and the original state of, of the kilns. Yeah. So these kilns were built with a fire retardant stone and filled in the core to help maintain the heat. The limestone was burned continuously in like a circuit around the whole kilns. And it took an average of about six weeks for one whole circuit. Then once the stone was burnt, it was then shoveled into the waiting railway carriages in a set of sidings. The kiln continued to produce lime up until 1931. As local competition kind of stole its trade, it wasn't for a further 20 years after the closure completely decommissioned these kilns. So however, these kilns and some of the historic buildings, Victorian buildings that are left here will be preserved as it is an integral part, an important part of the Settle to Carlisle Railway of which the lime quarry industry depended on. Mm -hmm.